morning, everyone. We are in the back of the Rhodes Scholars campus in between our fabrication shop and our paint facility. And uh, we've come up with this idea to share more storylines that go through our shop. And we're going to call this kind of series Quick Rips, if you will, meaning that uh, we're going to do more informal videos, information videos, uh, sharing of some of the more unique and rare things that come through our shop uh, on the buying side, restoration side, and on the selling side. And as you can see today, we're sitting between two Carrera GTL A-bars. Now this is a project code. This project is known by many different names. Internally at Porsche, this was known as the Type 644 T5 GT Wagen. And then it was also known when they finally came into the development with Carlos Abar to develop this model, they released it to a special dealership network at that time as the Carrera GT Special or Special. So it's known by different names and it's such an interest, interesting footnote and an important footnote for Porsche in its racing program, its GT program. Now this model came to fruition with an interpretation of homologation rules. And basically what Porsche did was use the T5 GT platform and drivetrain and of course had this very special and what makes these cars so unique, the Italian aluminum coachwork done to the cars. So that FII loop, loophole, and what Porsche was able to determine what they could really push the limits of was the basically body on a production chassis and drivetrain. And so they realized that through hiring and outsour outsourcing the GT body work, which was being done at Reuter with the T5 GT program at that time, that they could decrease the frontal area of these significantly by 15% and cut down the top basically the whole airflow over these cars and frontal area. Most importantly, that's what it was about and weight reduction. And basically the FI said if they could produce these cars at just over 1,700 pounds, they would be homologated. And of course these came in around 1,750 pounds and they're all different. That's what's so incredible about these cars, the aluminum hand-built details. And these cars were of course designed by Franco's Franco Scalione, who did amazing design work for both Zagato and, of course, Baritone. But he designed these cars with Carlos Abarth in a matter of months. And what's fascinating about these is kind of the history of how long it took to bring these to production. Uh, this is chassis six. We've sold a number of these over the years. We've sold chassis two. This is chassis six. Chassis 8, of course, everyone knows our restoration story with this car. Uh, and we sold chassis 14, and I've looked at about five other Carrera Abar GTLs over the years. So this is one of my favorite models, because I've always said it is the Ferrari GTO of the Porsche world uh, for so many reasons. If you think about it, this car is made in 1960 chassis 5, and this is a really great indication of the production challenges they had. Now, Porsche, there, it was a long time myth that these cars were produced by Zagato, and that's a little bit of a half truth. These cars were really produced by uh, a company called Veronzo Fellopini, first uh, series cars, and then Rocco Moto did the later majority of the production. But what's interesting is Porsche had a real time, hard time getting these cars out of Italy. So this car was not delivered to July of 1960, and then chassis eight, from chassis six to chassis eight, that car was not delivered to February of 1961. So you can really see the production challenge the challenges they had. And they had things like these cars, as you can see, the A-pillars are often crooked on these, again, indicative of hand-built Italian coach work. But a lot of these cars, when they were delivered to Porsche, they actually had to widen and widen the front wheel wells because the wheels wouldn't turn in them. And all these cars are different in those sort of details, as well as some of the exterior trim items. And then, of course, how these progress historically through racing. So as we know, one of the things that's made the Carrera GTO Abaf so iconic in the Porsche world is the rear end of these cars with the louvers. Um, basically, with the air scoops and the louvers, this is one of the most icon iconic features of these cars. These cars have left very drastic different lives. Chassis 6 was raced by the second owner, Robert Boucher, who owned a Porsche dealership in Poitiers, France. And he was a famous um, 
Porsche works driver. He actually did a, quite a bit of works driving, one Tour de France and a 904. Uh, he did all kinds of racing, started off with the uh, 550s, RSKs. Uh, he raced his car twice at Tour de France and then won many French rallies in his car. Uh, one of my favorite drivers, he's kind of this enigmatic, charismatic guy like so many of the gentlemen drivers, but he was a Porsche dealership owner and race car driver, ineffective. And what most people don't realize about the Carrera a GTL Abarth is that this car, from 1960 to 61, it took a, almost a full year to produce all 20 of them. They didn't make 21 of them. There's a lot of misinformation uh, there, out there about chassis 21. It's actually a, a 356A cab that had a Super 90 engine uh, with Speedster uh, graphics on the side. Uh, so, And that had uh, gone back to the factory for some repairs, and they gave it a VIN number of 1021, and of course, A-bar start off with series 1001 and go to all the way to 20, 1020. Um, but these cars are so, I, I love these cars for so many reasons, but they ran over 400 races from 1960 to 1961. In those races, over 100 class wins at places like Daytona. The car won, this model won uh, Le Mans three years in a row. So from Daytona to Spa, and then of course these had 46 overall wins uh, internationally. So it was really an important model for Porsche because again, if we think in today's terms, if we lo look at professional race at IMSA International, we think class wins in GT cars are so important for Porsche. And just as it is now, it was so really absolutely important for Porsche back then. And you can see the detailed differences on these cars. Uh, this car is freshly restored. This was restored for the 2019 Poe Beach Concourse d'Elegance. But this car was delivered brand new to Sweden, to Scania Vabis. Of course, that was a distributor in Sweden that got so many of the Gamun, later production Gamun Coupes. Uh, but this car was driven, maybe you should know, or already know, by C.B. Hammerlin. And he was a, a gentleman race car driver, but also a, a media person. He did this uh, series for the BBC called S Safety and Driving. And he won uh, 12 straight races in this car. And, it, and effectively, he won the 1961 and 62 Swedish GT Championship. In my opinion, this is one of the most original A-bars in the world because when we strip this down, it has its completely original body, uh, as well as uh, it's, this is the first A-bar chassis 8 that they get the 692-3A plane bearing engine, uh, which is a big deal. And a lot of these cars later on in the production series, when it got closer to chassis 16, 17, and 18, they were actually homologated or having racing in the 2-liter series. So there was GT2 classes because they had a 2-liter career motor, and those were really hot uh, because I, I can tell you right now, these cars are 300 pounders, 300 pounds lighter than a stock 356, and uh, they're 100 pounds lighter than a Reuter GT from that era. So really, again, all about weight reduction, um, also frontal error and how the air moves over these cars. But you know, some of the details I really love about these cars are these cars were delivered with these special modified GT seats. So they basically have, if you think in today's world of Recaro seats, these have higher sides on them. So they took an uh, aluminum GT seats that we found in the Speedster GT Coupe and actually increased the lateral height of them. Again, trying to prevent guys from sliding all over the place. But it's hard to show in a video just how light these cars are. Um, if you were here to swing this door, you'd be really impressed. Um, of course, these handles have made uh, the, the Zagato A-Bar GTL so popular because of that push button feature. Those were actually on the Gamun Coupes as well, uh, a majority of them a different style. But I love these cars. And again, we've had the honor of uh, selling four of these models, and I've looked at quite a few. But to me, this is still one of the most underrated, underappreciated Porsches ever to exist, and it's in that rare 20 group produced. There's only so many Porsche models like the 911R, the 1990 RS Lightweight. Uh, if you think about that rare grouping of cars where they only made 20 of, but this car having real race provenance, this model, but also being so important for the Porsche storyline. So for all the reasons I've talked about today in this quick rip video, uh, this was such an important model for Porsche, again, because not too long after this model 
Uh, they've already developed the, started the development work on the first fiberglass race car, of course, the 904 GTS, uh, Carrera GTS. So, in so many reasons, because of this car's poignant uh, race career it had from 1961 to 65 as a model, the fact this is that one of 20 club, there's only so many rare Porsche models where they made 20 of. I can think of the 911, the 67 911R, of course, the 1990 911 Lightweight being among those clubs, or even like some of the rare, like three liter RS, you know, they made 56 of those. But this is one of my favorite models because, again, it combines two of the best worlds of automobile history and manufacturing. You have all the German excellence of the design of the chassis, the drivetrain, and then of course you have the Italian styling as well as coach work that make these cars so special. And I love these two cars sitting next to each other. I could just, it never gets old looking at these two cars. And again, I can't emphasize how different each chassis is from each other. Um, you know, again, if I could summarize, these are really important cars. Again, I use that metaphor or analogy that these cars really are the Ferrari GTO, the Porsche world. But I hope you've enjoyed this quick rip. We're gonna try to do more of these um, off the cuff. So please uh, forgive me for uh, stuttering or pausing, but I hope you've enjoyed these. And we're, we're trying to do a better job of kind of showing some storylines and sharing some information from all the research hours that we have compiled here on these kind of rare Porsches. So take care. Thank you.